everybody. Uh, last week, whenever we were doing that, we found the mean, median, and mode, but really we just found the mode of things. In the background, you're going to be hearing my daughter playing with wooden bricks, which is going to be super, super loud. So I'm going to make this as fast as possible. So, last week we found the mean, and today we're going to be, I'm going to be giving you the mean, and you have to find the original data set. Last week you were given a data set, and you had to find the mean. This time I'm make, giving you the mean, and you get to make up a data set. Are all of your data sets going to be the same? No, because last week you discovered you can move around those numbers and still get the same average. If I were to add uh, 4, 5, 8, and 7 together, and then found the average of them, which is, or the mean of them, which is 6, I would get the exact same thing if I were to have the data set 6, 6, 2, and uh, 10. See, 12 and 12. Yep. I would have the exact same mean. Both of them would have an average or a mean of six. Do those two things look the same? No, they don't have any numbers in common, but you're still going to get the same mean. So in order to find your original data set or to create an original data set, you are going to have to work backward because you're starting with your last answer and then you're working backward. It's like a maze, how like whenever, or yeah, whenever you have a maze, like sometimes it, you start at the beginning and then you work to the finish. Um, but if you're like me, you start at the end and then you go backward and sometimes it's easier that way. So that's what we're going to do. First, let's take the data set that I had second. Uh, two, six, six, and 10. To find the mean of this data set, uh, the first thing that you're going to do that I told you to do is to add. However, really, if you're putting them in order, the first thing that you should do is count how many pieces are in your data so you make sure that you aren't missing any of them. So I'm going to kind of switch that up. I'm going to see how many pieces are in my data set. In my data set, I have one, two, three, four pieces of data. Second thing I'm going to do is add them. Six and six is 12, 10 and two is 12, and 12 and 12 is 24. And then the last step to find the average of them, you add them together and you divide your total by your data set. So divide uh, total by the set. So you take 24 divided by 4. What's 24 divided by 4? I know you guys know this. You're so right. Yeah, 24 divided by 4 is 4. Good job. So that is you finding the mean. That is what you have to do. Did I say, oh my gosh. This is why I need you guys in my classroom. 24 divided by 4 is not 4. 24 divided by 4 is 6. I don't know if I said that out loud, but my brain is going crazy. It's 6. Don't listen. Do listen to me, but don't listen to me. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah you know what I mean. Okay. It's 6. So <laughs> that is finding the mean. Today you're going to be given this answer right there, and you are going to have to find this right there. So in order to do that, you need to work it backwards. And we've talked about this. This is going to prepare you for pre-algebra and algebra because you're going to be doing inverse operations. You're going to have to do the opposite of everything that you did because just like that maze, you're going to have to go backward. You have to retrace what you did. So instead of dividing, what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to multiply. It, you'll get it. You'll get it. And then instead of adding, you're going to have to subtract. It's, it's going to be great. You guys are going to do fine. You're going to do fine. This is, you can do this. I know you can. Okay. So let's, you have this written down. You, you know what you're doing here. I'm not, I'm not going to go over this again. I'll probably go over it again. Let's be honest. I'm a teacher. I like go over things 5,000 times. She's bringing it in here, guys. Okay, so let's say they're going to give you that you have, um, for your data set, you have five pieces of data. And they're telling you that your mean, hey, hey. 
you make a noise. That your mean is, say, 20. Thank you. Sorry, I'm not back. Uh, and we need to find out what our total is. Why do we need to find our total? Well, in order to find out our individual pieces of data, we have to find our total. This is the working backward part. So what we do know is that our total divided by our data set, which is five, has to equal 20. Look at, I'm tying in algebra to this. It all connects. Everything that I've taught you this year leads to this, guys. Look, look at math. It's, you guys think that I'm crazy sometimes. And you're like, Mr. Vader, why do I need to know this? This is why. It all connects. That's why math is so beautiful, people. Okay, anyway, getting off of that soapbox. Um, so, what divided by 5 equals 20? And I know that you guys know this because you guys are so great at your 5s, and you know that 100 divided by 5 is 20. So, we know that our total here is going to be 100. Mrs. Raider, don't just assume that I know that 100 divided by 5 is 20. You're right. I should not assume that. So instead, we're going to use what we learned about inverse operations. So instead of dividing by 5, what do I need to do? I need to get that t by itself. So instead of dividing by 5, I'm going to multiply by 5. And that 5 divided by 5 is 1. So really, I'm taking 5 times or t times 1. So those cancel out. And then I'm going to multiply by 5. And my total equals 100. Yeah, and we've talked about this. If you want more help with inverse operations, I can help you out with that too. Uh, but anyway, my total is 100. We got that because we took these two and multiplied them together. So instead of dividing being our last thing that we do, our first thing that we're going to do is multiply. So now I know that my total equals 100. I also know that my data set has five pieces in it. So now, instead of adding things together, I'm gonna to be taking away from 100. And take away means to subtract. But I don't really think of it as subtracting because I don't like to subtract. You guys know this about me. I, I really just don't like it. So I like thinking of it as like breaking it apart, like taking a puzzle because not all of these numbers are going to be equal, which we saw earlier. You could have two, six, six, and 10. You could have four, five, seven, and eight. I just like thinking of as like taking a like a big cookie and then just like throwing it on the ground and like seeing all the pieces. Are all the pieces going to be the same? No, they're going to be all different sizes. So it's going to be the same thing here. They could all, you could, yes, you could have a set of data that said 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Or I could break it like a cookie when I drop it on the ground or a plate, which you shouldn't do and drop it on the ground and it has all different pieces. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to start out with my total of 100. Hey, kiddo. My total of 100. And let's say when I break this whole pie of 100, let's say that my first piece that I count up has like 35. So this counts up for 35. This is where the subtracting comes in. So I have one piece that's 35. So I'm going to write 35 over here. I need four more pieces of data. So 100 minus 35 gives me 65. So now I have to have four pieces of data that add up to 65. So I'm gonna say, okay, well, I want this one to be a 25. Why? Because I like counting with fives, apparently. Um, the next ones I promise I won't do with fives, maybe. I don't know, I'll forget by then. Um, so I take, now, do I subtract 25 from 100? No, I do not. I have this 65 over here and I'm going to subtract 25 from it. I'm going to put 25 over here in my data set. When I subtract those, I get 40. Oh my. And I have five pieces of data, so I have to have break that up into three different pieces. So I'm going to say one of those is going to be, this is going to be a big chunk of it, is going to be 30. So I subtract 30 from that. I'm going to put 30 up here. Okay, now I have 10. So that means I have to have two more data pieces that equal 10 when I add them together. And so I'm going to make one of those six and one of those four. So my new data set is going to be four, six, 35, 
25, and 30. Now you notice three of those are larger than my mean. And, but the thing is, is two of these are way lower. That's why it's going to average out to that 20. So after you get finished making up your data set, remember, you took your total, or sorry, you took your average, you multiplied by your number in your data set, and then you broke it up like a cookie and you started giving out sections to different numbers. As, now that you've broken it all up, you need to go back and make sure that it equals the total that it should. I should have a total of 100 when I go back and check this. If I don't have 100, then my answer is going to be wrong. And you guys know me. I make lots of silly mistakes. There's a roller coaster going on in this brain. So I'm going to go and check my data sets to make sure it equals 100. That way, whenever I take 100 and divide it by 5, my mean is going to be 20. So, you take 35, you add 25, and 30, and 6, and 4. 6 plus 4 is 10, 5 plus 5 is 10. So that's going to give me a 0 right there, and 10 plus 10 is 20. Bring that 2 up in the tens place. So I have 3 tens, 2 tens, 3 tens, 2 tens. This is 6 tens, 4 tens. That gives me 10 tens, which gives me 100, because 10 times 10 is 100. So I have my total being 100, which it should be, because when I multiply these two, 5 times 20, I get 100. Now, if you really want to double check, we made that equation earlier that my total divided by 5 equals 20, equals the average. If you wanted to have that all letters and all variables, we can make that the total divided by the data set. Remember, I don't like using S's whenever I'm writing equations because at my, a lot of my times my S's look like 5's. But anyway, and that's going to equal my mean. So my total divided by, case in point, by 5 equals 20. So I multiply by, or I'm going to substitute this 100 in. 100 divided by 5 equals 20. Does 100 divided by 5 equal 20? Yes, it does. If you still don't believe me, take 100 divided by 5. 5 goes into 10 two times because 5, 10 gives me 10. Subtract that. Bring down your zeros. Don't say remainder zero. There's a zero there. Bring it down, people. And five goes into zero, zero times. So I get 20. Okay. That was a 13-minute lesson on how to work that backwards. If you have any more questions, which I'm sure some of you will because my brain is not your brain and some things that make sense to me are not going to make sense to you because of how I say them, please let me know and I will try to clarify anything that I can. But until then, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Monday. I miss you dearly. You are amazing. And I can't wait to see you in person. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. And for goodness sake, if you do, please don't tell me about it. Okay. Bye-bye.